This video covers sediment transport processes and the resulting facies in aeolian environments. The word aeolian describes transport and deposition by wind, so aeolian environments are primarily sand dunes, especially in deserts, but also sometimes near beaches or any place where there's abundant wind and abundant available sand. Aeolian deposits are pretty easily recognized in general. These giant cross beds like you see on the right are pretty unmistakable. Uh, but there's a lot of nuance, especially regarding dune type or other specific processes that we're not going to cover in this video. It's also important to note that most desert areas are actually rocky surfaces and not sand dunes. These desert pavements, as they're called, are formed by wind erosion, also called deflation, um, and therefore they're sometimes called deflation surfaces in the sedimentary rock record. But because deflation surfaces are sites of erosion, they don't make it they don't make up much of the sediment column or the sediment, sedimentary record thickness. Instead, sand dunes are what makes up the vast majority of the preserved sediment thickness, even though it wasn't the most of the area in the original environment. So sediment transport by wind has a lot of similarities um, with transport by water. Larger grains can move by, by creep, like sliding along the, the ground in traction motion. The smallest grains may be carried in suspension via turbulent eddies, and the bulk of the sand grains in, in wind transport move by saltation, these short, these short distance um, hops or jumps along the, uh, along the bed. The reasons for these similarities is that air is a fluid just like water is a fluid, although it's a substantially less dense fluid and a substantially less viscous fluid. You may remember Stude's criterion, which describes the water velocity required to move a particle of, of diameter d. Well, a very similar equation with a slightly different constant term applies to sediment transport by air, only it's called the, the Bagnall threshold here. Uh, the density of water, fresh water at least, is 1 gram per cubic centimeter, so the left-hand equation only includes grain density minus fluid density, uh, but because the fluid density of air is around 750 times less than that of water, movement of a particle of diameter d requires air speed around 30 times greater than the water velocity that would be required to move the same particle. Saltation in these hops is extremely important in wind transport. So after a saltating or, or, or bouncing grain is ejected or kicked out of the bed, it follows this ballistic trajectory, this parabolic arc, until it collides back with the bed at, at the end. Because the fluid drag is much less in air due to the lower viscosity and the lower density, grain collisions are really the primary mechanism driving particle movement in these terrestrial settings. The grains just hit the bed with much more energy than they would in, in water. Also, typical wind speeds, given the, the, the threshold, can only move medium sand and, and smaller. So aeolian deposits are typically very well-sorted fine sand. Also, the constant sandblasting by these collisions removes pretty much any fragile grains or, or easily broken down grains, uh, and you're left with pretty much only quartz. So the, the sandstones are, are often super mature quartz aronites. And these quartz grains, like in the picture here, can have this sort of frosted surface texture. There's like microscopic little pits and, and holes in them from the constant collisions and sandblasting by other grains. So the wind movement of sediment can produce ripples that do at least somewhat resemble the subaqueous current ripples found in, in rivers. The wind ripples also generally have an asymmetrical shape, and they are small sized, you know, typically a few millimeters in height and maybe spaced a few centimeters, a few tens of centimeters apart. Um, they maybe have a somewhat more rounded or flatter crest, but there's, there's a lot of similarities. In the case of, of the wind ripples, what's happening is that the, these grain impacts that are so important kind of nudge the larger particles along by intermittent rolling or sliding. They may eject other grains from the crest. And so this type of wind ripple is often called a ballistic ripple or an impact ripple just because the ballistic impacts of grains are so important in forming them.
But despite the general or similar appearance between wind ripples and water current ripples, the mechanism in which they migrate is actually quite different. And so as I said a couple of times already, the saltation bombardment, the, the impacts of grains that are saltating or bouncing along the bed, um, are, is really important because of the differential energy of, of the collisions. So impacts that occur along or near the crest of the ripple happen at a pretty steep angle. The, the grain is coming in at a, you know, not vertically, but at a fairly high angle relative to the bed. And so therefore those collisions are quite energetic. But on the steeper leaf face, the, the impacts are much less energetic because they're hitting, the particles hitting at a much lower angle. What this means is that at the crest where you have high energy impacts, they will eject and kick out really any small sand particles uh, and therefore leave behind only the coarse particles. Fine sand can be preserved in the troughs where the energy of collisions is much lower. So what this does is it leads to a general inverse grading, which is a gradual shift from finer particles at the base of the bed to coarser particles at the top of the bed. Really large sand dunes are the most obvious feature of aeolian environments and of the sedimentary deposits from aeolian environments. Um, the sand making up these dunes accumulates basically in two ways. You could have um, grain fall, which is the individual deposition of sort of single sand grains by saltation, uh, as well as grain flow. So in grain flow, sand moves towards the crest, sort of building up the crest and oversteepening it. And when the slope angle at the crest, when it becomes oversteepened and when it exceeds a critical angle, the crest will fail and sort of a blob or a flow of sand will um, flow or slide down the slope in a big sort of en masse, in a big package. So the, the bulk of those flows, these, these bulk flows of sand, are moved as a type of sediment gravity flow called a grain flow. Uh, we discussed sediment gravity flows in the context of debris flows beforehand in the, in the case of alluvial fans. So like debris flows, grain flows have a plastic rheology, which means they have a yield strength. They differ from debris flows or mud flows in the nature of the sediment support mechanism. In debris flows, particles are supported by matrix strength due to the presence of clay minerals, whereas particles in these grain flows are supported by grain interactions and grain collisions called dispersive pressure. So the rheology of grain flows affects the nature of their deposits. Unlike in a debris flow, the grain flow sediments or sand dune sediments are not cohesive, but they do have a yield strength. They are a plastic. The yield strength comes from, from frictional forces between the grains. So that yield strength has to be overcome for the sand flow to actually move. Because the shear stress is produced by gravity, grain flows only form and move on fairly steep slopes. As the slope shallows towards the bottom of the dune at the toe of the slope, shear stress decreases and it's unable to maintain the dispersive pressure from the grain interactions. Um, and so the flow basically deposits very rapidly. It freezes in place like a, like a debris flow. Uh, in this picture, you can see how these flows end quite abruptly near the base of the slope. The flow also doesn't spread out laterally uh, because it would lose too much energy by doing so and therefore the shear stress would fall below the yield strength. So the deposits end up being these sort of lobe-shaped kind of blobs in this, in this photo here. So as I mentioned, the, the sediment support mechanism in grain flows is something called dispersive pressure. Collisions between the moving particles tend to force them apart. Uh, this leads to what's called volumetric dilation of the flow. Basically, the entire flow thickness puffs up with air between the grains. So the resulting deposits from grain flows are sort of millimeter scale laminations. They might be maybe up to a centimeter thick, but not much thicker than that because grain flows in air really just can't get thicker. You can't get enough dispersive pressure um, to maintain grain separation and flow in a, in a larger flow. The deposits are inversely graded, which again means that they're finer grained at the base and coarser grained at the top. In the case of grain flows, the inverse grading likely arises from a process called kinetic sieving. Basically what this means is that the smaller particles are able to filter between the bigger grains that kind of ping-pong their way towards the bottom of the flow by falling through holes in and among the bigger grains. 
this is sometimes at least colloquially called the Brazil nut effect. It's the same reason why if you get a tin of mixed nuts, you find all the fragments and crumbs at the bottom and all the big nuts, like the Brazil nuts, floating at the top. It's the same reason also why at the bottom of your bo box of breakfast cereal, you get all that annoying powder. The fine stuff is just able to sort its way through the, the spaces in between the bigger particles. Sand dunes are composed of a mixture of these grain fall and grain flow beds. Grain flows start or initiate near the crest of the bed and deposit when they reach the, the toe or the base of the bed. This means that the contribution of grain flow strata becomes more important and thickens towards the base of the dune. As mentioned before, the individual grain flow beds are thin and inversely graded. Grain flow strata, in contrast, um, forms as grains accumulate fairly continuously, one by one being deposited from saltation. This means that they're well sorted because only a narrow range of grain sizes can be moved by saltation, but it also means that the lamination is somewhat indistinct, if at all, developed because of the continuous or fairly continuous accumulation of, of particles. This grain fall deposits form pretty much everywhere on the face, but because of the dominance of grain flow at the base, it just seems that grain fall units tend to thin as you go from the crest towards the base of the dune. 